Hello and welcome back. I'm Tara Spiger and today I am so excited to be talking to you about my April to be read list, which is part of the Magical Readathon. Now last year is the first time I participated in the Magical Readathon and I actually missed the owls in April. So I think I did them in May or June. I'll, I'll link it up up here, those videos about doing the readathon last year. Um, but I, I did participate with them in July or August. So let's back up. What the Magical Readathon is, is an amazing thing put together by G of Book Roast, where you pretend you're students at Hogwarts. You take classes to prepare for careers in the magical world of Hogwarts, um, and she's created this amazingly beautiful career guide, which lists all different kinds of careers you could have in the magical world, and then the career guide tells you what classes you have to revise for or study for. And those classes to revise for them, you read a book. So they've got a prompt for each class and you read a book based on that prompt and you're gonna pick the prompts based on what career you wanna do. Now you can skip the careers and just read the prompts you wanna read or you can choose your career based on the prompts you wanna read. But this year she added the career of care for magical children, which is basically being a foster parent and I'm doing it, so I should definitely get like my degree in it from Hogwarts, I do believe. So I've got the whole month of April to read the books uh, inspired by these prompts that will lead me to uh, be prepared for a career in care of magical children. And right now my own magical children are sleeping or they should be taking a nap in the next room. So we'll see if I can get through this before they get up. For this career, I need to revise for the areas of arithmancy, charms, defense against the dark arts, herbology, muggle studies, and history of magic. Is that five? That's five. So that means I'm gonna read five books for this readathon. Now, before we get into the books I chose for these prompts, I gotta show you that I got these really cute bookmarks from G at Book Rose that say Magical Readathon and they have the logo on the back and she's painted them so there's ancient runes there's all the different studies you might be studying I've put the uh, bookmarks in the books that they go to that I'm going to read for the different prompts because the libraries are closed and I get like 90% of my book at my libraries I've basically figured out how to use the books that are already in my house both from the library and that I just owned um, in order to fulfill these, I bought a book or two to fulfill the challenges, um, but I'm really using the Libby app with, from my library to use the ebook or the audiobook if I don't own it, or just going with the library books I checked out before all the libraries closed and we were all stuck at home. Rhythmancy, I chose The Dutch House by Ian Patchett. It is historical fiction. It is one of the books I had in my house that is in a genre that um, I wouldn't usually read. I got this from the library for another project I'm working on and it's not the kind of thing I'm particularly excited to read. It's historical fiction following a family, makes one good real estate investment and then has wealth and the purchase of this one house, the Dutch house, you watch it as their family falls apart. It's literary fiction, historical fantasy, not usually something I've read, but I've heard amazing things about it, so I'm hoping I don't hate it. The next uh, class I need to revise for is charms, and for that, doing the Lumos Maxima charm, which is to pick a book with a white cover. So for that, I'm picking Jane Austen, A Life by Claire Tomlin. You guys will have heard me talk about this earlier in my Jane Austen uh, read-along or Jane Austen reading vlogs. I intend to read it you know, while reading Jane Austen's works. And it's got a white cover, so it totally fits for this. I'll definitely be reading this this month. I'm very excited to get started with this. I've only read a couple pages, so I'm gonna be reading that this month for my charms class. The next one was challenging. So it is Defense Against the Dark Arts, Grindelows. Read a book set at the sea or the coast. Now, I really struggled with this because you don't always know where a book is set from the cover or from the, you know, cover copy, unless it, like is very much about the ocean and for some reason I took this as set on the secret coast like tried to meet a book and so I asked Instagram for recommendations thank you for everybody who made recommendations I did realize that one of the books on my shelf The Bird King is set on most of the stuff happens on an island 
which is obviously near the sea or the coast. But this is not the book on my um, to be read list. I actually, this month, the book The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel came out and it has been on my list. I've been very <clears throat> excited for this release because ever since I loved Station Eleven. So I already had it pre-ordered, The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. However, Amazon said it will probably get here towards the end of April, like April 18th, April 22nd. So this book is set um, on Vancouver Island and there's actually a glass hotel set I think that's overlooking the ocean um, but if not there's also something about a shipping container and while it's at sea something happens so it's kind of all I know I'm kind of sure of anything else it'll be literary fiction it might be slightly mysterious but without like a murder mystery just like slightly mysterious very atmospheric because that's how Emily St. John Mandel writes super excited to read it but if it doesn't come in time if it's not here by the 22nd 25th I'll read The Burn King by G. Willow Wilson, which I've been looking forward to reading forever. The next up is Herbology. If you read a book that starts with a letter M, well, I immediately thought of the book I plan on reading this month anyhow for part of my Jane Austen read-along is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I've never read this yet. Very much looking forward to it. Don't know a lot about it, except for that it's set at Mansfield Park, and I'm sure it follows a plucky young woman, because all of her novels do. So it starts with them, so I'm gonna read Mansfield Park for this. The next subject is a History of Magic, in which we're supposed to read a book with a witch in it. Now this is really easy if you read a lot of fantasy. I don't, and I don't have any of it on my shelf. Like, I thought about Mistborn, which I don't actually have, but I've been meeting to read, um, and K. Jemison's Broken Earth series. These are all fantasy books that are on my list, but don't actually have witches in it. So what I decided on, after scrolling all through my uh, Wanna Read shelf on Goodreads, is the book House Witch, uh, which is, I really decided to read it because it's contemporary, it's modern, and it's about a foster kid who grows up and basically just wants to create a very normal, suburban life for herself. She wants to be like a good suburban mom in a way that she never had and she gets in with these group of uh, local ladies who are kind of like Stepford wives in the way that they're all the same and they all do this um, soap selling company together which I think is a little bit like an MLM company and she discovers some powers and she discovers her own power within and it's magical. I wanted something because I'm doing like the historical fiction and some book or bu bigger books in Jane Austen. I wanted something like faster paced, more contemporary, like slightly easier to read. And so I went with this book, which has been on my shelf forever. I think I probably initially put it on my shelf because it's about a foster child who becomes a mom. And I like reading stories like that. I'm just going with it. If House Witch doesn't arrive in time, I will probably pick something from my shelf and just decide it counts. Like a darker shade of magic, which has magic in it, but not necessarily. It's like the world is magical. There aren't people wielding the magic. Or for that matter, I could um, find something in my Libby app from my library, read something there. If you have a suggestion for this, I am open to it. Now the next subject I have to revise is muggle studies and for that you pick a book told by a muggle, like a contemporary story. So I have chosen You Are Not You Are Not Alone by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. I got this in my book of the month box a couple months ago. I've been meaning to read it um, or I've been looking forward to reading it. It was just released in March and it is part of um, Books and Lala's Literary Dead, liter <laughs> Literally Dead Book Club. It's the April book club pick, so I was waiting till April to read it anyhow. So it's going to count as my Muggle Studies book, and I'll have read it for the Books and Lala Literally Dead Book Club, which I'll link up below. Oh my gosh, I have more. I forgot I had this many. So the next subject I need to study is potions, and for that, which is pick a book under 150 pages. Now, I am just gonna read a picture book. We have a bunch from the library, most of which I've read. We own a bunch, all of which I've read, but I did just order Ada Twist Scientist. I think my girls will love it. I think I'll love it. Um, and it is under 150 pages because it's a picture book all about a little girl who likes to do experiments, likes to get into trouble, likes to ask questions, and uh, it fits perfectly. And because all the libraries are closed, there's not a chance I'm going to read a lot of new picture books unless I got a new one myself. So that's been on our list for a while, so I'm looking forward to that one. 
And then the last one is um, transfigurations. Now for this prompt, you're supposed to read a story that involves shapeshifters. And again, because I don't read a lot of fantasy and I don't have a lot of fantasy at home, I really struggled with this. Um, G has put together this form you can fill out to make suggestions for what books you know will fit the prompts. And so, and then she also gives you access to the results of that form, the spreadsheet of that form. And there, I found out a lot of people saying that the Children of Blood and Bone um, sequel called Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adayemi fit this. I don't remember there being shapeshifters when I read the first one, but apparently there are. And so I requested it from my Libby app. The audiobook came in yesterday and the um, Kindle book just came in today. So I'm going to be able to read Children of Virtue and Vengeance, which has been on my um, to be read list like since it came out. That is all the prompts I have to read in order to get my degree, in order to sit my owls for um, care of magical children. But there is a bonus. You can take, um, you can take, what are they called? Uh, like extra credit basically. And one of the extra credit like subjects is uh, linguistics of mermaids which I had to do. So for that, you just have to fulfill the herbology prompt, which I could count my fill filling it for this as that. No, I'm not going to go and read another book because I got it on my shelf. So, so as a reminder, that herbology prompt was read a book that starts with M. I got another book on my shelf that starts with M. The Most Fun We Ever Had by Claire Lombardo. It is a big one. You can see it has a herbology, uh, bookmark in it already. Uh, this is a contemporary book that follows a family. A secret comes out. Stuff happens. There are three or four adult daughters and the parents. I think their family kind of falls apart after the secret comes out or they're afraid it's going to. It's been highly recommended by people I trust like um, on the What Should I Read Next podcast by Ann Bogle and uh, it is also up for the women's short the Women's Prize in Fiction. It's on the long list, so I wanted to read it anyhow. That's why I requested it from the library. Thank goodness it fits for this prompt. So I'll get to that this month. This is the stack of books for me to read for the Magical Readathon this month. Um, a couple aren't pictured because I don't have them yet. My TBR for April and for the Magical Readathon. If you're participating, I would love to tell me what you're reading in April below. I am so glad I have this project to think about so that I do not think about how the libraries are closed and the kids are home all day. I hope you are having an extra week, an excellent week, and I hope you are staying safe and staying home. I'll be back this Wednesday with an episode of my podcast and uh, later on in the week with a list of actually what I read in March. Some of it was very suited to being stuck at home. And next week I will have a reading vlog where I talk about which of these books I've read. I plan to do a small reading vlog um, every week during the Magical Readathon, just updating on my progress and talking about the books. So keep me posted on what you're reading. I will talk to you later. Have a great week.